Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is a new feature found in the September 2021 release of Power Automate Desktop that allows us to call SOAP web services from Power Automate Desktop. Let's go. So let's take a moment to talk about why this episode is important. So naturally, when you have RPA, a big part of it is being able to automate legacy applications. And whenever we're talking about legacy applications, chances are some of those applications are gonna use SOAP web services. And so as a result, there is a need to have SOAP capabilities inside of Power Automate Desktop itself. Now in this September 2021 release of Power Automate Desktop, there's a new action called Invoke SOAP Web Service. And you can go ahead and drag this onto your canvas and go ahead and use it. So this is gonna allow you to consume a WSDL that'll be available uh, to you over a network, and then it'll essentially be able to download the proxy in order to communicate with those SOAP web services itself. Now, there is SOAP support inside of Power Automate. However, it gets exposed through a custom connector experience. So that is one option that you do have. Now we have another option where we can actually go ahead and call this from PAD. So it really gives you the opportunity to choose where is the best place to be able to go ahead and call it. Naturally, if you can call it directly in a cloud flow and don't need to get into a desktop flow just to do that, you should take advantage of the custom connector. But if you're actually in the middle of automating, you know, across a couple different applications and you need to enrich those applications with data from a SOAP web service, then naturally being able to do that from pad is highly advantageous. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look at a demo. This is the new action itself, but I'm going to show you exactly how you go ahead and configure all of this. Okay, so before we get too far into the demo, there's a couple things that we're going to need. So number one is we're gonna need a WSDL. We're gonna need a service that we can go ahead and call. And so what, I found one online that seems to work and uh, it'll be good enough for our purposes. So I'll include this link in the description, but this is something that you are going to go ahead and need. The other thing that we're going to need, or at least will be helpful, is a tool called SOAP UI. So it's been a long time since I've used this tool. Uh, it's been a long time since I've called SOAP services, but you know this is a tool that I used to use back in the day when calling BizTalk web services, and uh, it worked well from that perspective. Uh, so you can go ahead and download the open source version of this, and this will be helpful when it comes time to go ahead and creating our request object that we need to provide as part of our SOAP call itself. So go ahead, I'll include this link as well in the description of the video as well if you wanna go ahead and download it. It is free, there's no charge, and I've used it before in the past. Okay, so now we are inside of Power Automate Desktop, and if you are using the September 2021 version or newer, you're going to find this specific action here invoke soap web service so just go ahead and search for soap or invoke and you'll be able to find it what we can do here is just drag it onto our design surface and the first thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and click on this build request and so this is when we need that wisdom because uh, the the tool itself pad is going to need to consume the wisdom so that it can go ahead and sort of figure out the rest of the configuration now the service itself, there's just going to be one called calculator. That's the you know the web service that we're going to call. But this SOAP web service does have multiple operations, so just be aware of that. We're just going to use add for the purposes of this demonstration. Now, this request envelope, this was where SOAP UI will come in handy because we need to essentially populate the request object that is going to be used in order to send a request to that web service. So now I'm in SOAP UI and I can just click on file and then new SOAP project, just give this a name. And then we can go ahead and paste in that WSDL and then click OK. So what we're gonna see is all of those different operations show up. So the one that we were interested in was add. And then we can go ahead and see this SOAP request. So what this is going to do is it gives us the opportunity to provide a couple sample values here. We can go ahead and hit play and then we can see what the response looks like. What we need to do is we can go ahead and copy out this request object and then we will take it back over to pad. 
So now I'm back over at pad and I can go ahead and I can copy these values in and this would be good to go. Now, obviously what we have here is some hard coded values. I will show you how to fix that here next. So let's just go ahead and click okay for now. And I have a configured action already in place here um, that we'll go ahead and, and see. So I'm gonna delete this one. Okay, so that's, that's deleted. Now, what you'll notice over here on the right hand side is I've got three variables defined. I've got number one, which is an input variable that I will go ahead and use to um, as one of those numbers that we can go ahead and add. Um, because this is declared up here, we can go ahead and pass it in from a Cloudflow, which we will be doing towards the end of this video. So here, just have a variable name, the external name, and a default value. So that's what we've got for number one. Number two is going to look quite similar. Obviously, you can change the names as you see fit. Um, but there's our number two input variable. Then what we have is we have an output variable defined, and this is where we're gonna go ahead and send out our SOAP response back out to our Cloudflow. So depending upon your scenario, this might be optional, but I wanted to send my SOAP response back to my Cloudflow, so this is gonna be an output variable. And then what I've got going on here is inside the invoke soap web service this is where we can now parameterize our request so here you can see that i've gone ahead and replaced those hard-coded values with my input variables so that percent number one percent sign represents the first one and then obviously number two is, is the second one so this is how we can make our bodies dynamic from that perspective then all we're going to do is we're going to set this output variable to the variable that we defined here, SOAP response, and uh, we'll be able to save that entire response back to an output variable. So let's go ahead, let's just run this and see what the experience looks like. Okay, so that ran successfully. Let's go ahead and take a look at our response from the SOAP service itself. And we can see that our result is 3,000. So we've got 1,000 plus 2,000 is 3,000. So that looks good. We're able to go ahead and call our SOAP service. So now what I've done is I've transitioned over to a Cloudflow where I want to be able to go ahead and call this script, this desktop flow script that will reach out to the SOAP endpoint itself. So I've just got manually trigger a flow configured here. Then I've got a couple of inputs defined. In this case, they're just numbers, I've named them number one and number two. Then I went ahead and add a run, a flow built with Power Automate Desktop, configured it, and then pass in those two inputs. Now, as we had uh, talked about before, is we've got an output variable that is set from within Power Automate Desktop. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I want to extract the value from that response and then be able to use it on its own. So if we do one plus two equals three, I wanna be able to access three. And what I'm doing here is using a XPath expression in order to do that. There is support for XPath as well inside of Power Automate Desktop. I'm, I guess, more familiar with this method, just having been around Cloudflow for much longer. So I'm just gonna use it on its, uh, using it this way. I will include this expression inside of the description of the video as well if you are following along. So let's go ahead, let's test this out. I'm gonna pause the recording just because this will take around 30 seconds to run, but I'll show you what the output looks like here shortly. Okay, our process has finished. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the outputs for our desktop flow action. And here we can see our SOAP response. We should have our value here of 5,000. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that XPath query in order to go ahead and get at the raw value, which is 5,000 here. So we'll be able to just grab that directly. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, uh, it's kind of the first look at the SOAP action inside of Power Automate Desktop. So if you do have any sort of SOAP requirements, you can go ahead and address them through Power Automate Desktop. 
In addition, there is support for soap through the use of a custom connector. So it kind of de depends on where you need to call this web service from, whether it makes more sense in the cloud or if it makes more sense in padded. It's very much gonna be dependent upon your use case. All right, so thanks for checking out another video on the channel. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. You're obviously watching the video on YouTube. Any likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome. Thanks again for checking out this content and we'll see you again next week.